Well, thank you, Mark. Um, I'm going to give you a, a little um, peek into what we've been doing here for many years. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of history of how this came about and why I think it's actually a, a very uh, a good approach to doing elbow trauma and elbow arthroplasty. Um, we know that to get to the elbow for these cases, um, we have to use the back door, i.e. we have to get through the triceps mechanism. We've all been trained on many different approaches to doing this in the past, um, both on the elective side and on the tra trauma side. Um, so why? Um, that's the reason we come in the, from the from the back door, if you will. Uh, but the trouble has been, uh, it's not always uh, perfect. There's complications that arise. There's many um, approaches. The uh, sort of workhorse for trauma has been the electron osteotomy, widely used. You get great uh, articular visualization, uh, but there are some troubles. You are creating um, an osteotomy that has to heal so you can get a non-union. You're creating more scar tissue uh, and there's some expense to it because you got to fix it. Uh, if you're using simple K wires and surplus wires, it's pretty cheap, but more and more these days, people are using uh, plates and other things and it's not uh, 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 cost free. Uh, the triceps reflection for the total elbow uh, folks, everyone's pretty familiar with the Mayo approach, the medial lateral, lateral um, tricep slide, if you will, and get it over. Um, it can be used um, not so much for fracture, but for total elbow. And I bring it up only to to, to, to tell you that um, it's still uh, being used by some in total elbow. It, to me, it's um, been fraught with lots of troubles. Um, and there's many times on my elective arthroplasty practice back in the day, where you're trying to make up for poor triceps and doing an ankenia slide. Um, in fracture work, it really doesn't have a place. So you can see how in some cases it's been used. This was a, a youth that had a, a male elbow approach to his distal humerus fracture done. And the kid came into me with an elbow contracture. He had no idea, uh, or at least he didn't complain about the fact that he had zero triceps function. And I said, you think you might want to get your triceps working a little better? And he goes, that'd be great. So this is what we found in there. And of course, uh, what you had to do is what you do on many total levels. You had to do an ankeny, a slide to get some coverage over the back of the electron. Um, so other ones, a triceps on. Uh, used this a lot back in the day when I was doing uh, uh, distal humeral fractures. And, uh, and the advantages you can convert um, doing a total elbow, uh, it's, uh, the kicker is, is that it, it worked when you were doing total elbows of old. The newer um, uh, elbow arthroplasties, you cannot connect them very well um, uh, doing this kind of approach. So the old Coonrad Mori was no problem because you slid in a little uh, pin from either side and you can get it done but most of them are not that easy to put together. So um, yeah, yes, it was good because you didn't burn a bridge, but no, because if you had to, uh, uh, today, if you have to convert to total elbows, not quite as good. Um, <clears throat> the triceps split, I was trained on this for uh, trauma. Uh, Robin Richards uh, uh, taught it to all of us, uh, to Mike McKee, uh, Emil, uh, Emil Shemich, all of us were trained on this. Um, it's simple, it's reliable. Um, and you come from top all the way down uh, across the ulna. And when you need more exposure, you just release the collateral ligaments off the insertion on the ulna, and you're able to get even more exposure to distal humerus. Now that might freak some people out, um, but I was trained on this. I've never seen an elbow instability. And I can tell you from hundreds of cases that we've uh, done subsequently, which I'll show you, that again, it's not an inst instability is not what you get after a fracture. Uh, and then uh, Mike and uh, Emil went and looked up um, a bunch of these cases uh, and they looked at their electron on osteotomies and uh, looked at their um, tricep split um, and in fact uh, they did just fine. Uh, there was not an uh, inferior result at all. Um, in fact, they had slightly less uh, good results in the electron on osteotomy group. Um, again, being trained up uh, in Toronto, uh, Joe Schatzker um, uh, showed us this, uh, you know, the, the inverted V approach, if you will, which was a full thickness through muscle, through tendon, uh, pretty compromising to the distal triceps area, but it works. You can get down and get some exposure and a simple fracture, you can be, it can, you can deal with this. And if you have to convert this to a total level, you can. not um, It is still doable here and we'll talk about that. Um, and then um, my training on that and then um, stumbling across 
um, some uh, papers, um, the original stuff that appeared in Campbell's by Van Gorder, looking at the fascial tongue approach for T condylar fractures. And that's what he described it for the T condylar fractures. And uh, way back in the 40s. Um, and uh, I said, well, okay. Uh, and I immediately started using this for total elbows. And so I kept doing these for total elbows and doing either a tricep split or some other approach for my fractures. And then I kind of, you know, woke up one day and say, why am I not just doing this? And so I started to do it for fractures and for my total elbows. And it gave me that ability to go either way uh, when I'm doing those cases. And we'll uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the approach itself um, as we move forward here. So we described uh, in detail, uh, expanding upon what Van Gorder uh, talked about, and we applied it to the total elbow world and, uh, and showed how it was useful for total elbows. Um, and this is the approach, um, sort of a little modification of, of what he did, a little uh, fascial tongue. And you can see from the diagram on the left here, it can be, um, it can be extended up uh, approximately as far as you want to go. And we'll talk about that. And it can be extended distally. Um, you can get down as far as you want to go. Uh, you elevate this um, thin uh, fascial. I don't make it too thin. Um, I, I leave a little bit of muscle on it, actually, just so I don't uh, cause it to be too thin. Um, and then you come right around uh, the electron. And what you want to be able to do is get into that thick cable portion of the triceps on either side. So you got something repaired to. And then you can just clear off the back of the humerus and you have a great look at the distal humerus. Now, if you're gonna do um, a total elbow, um, you're just gonna continue on and keep releasing much like the tricep split that I talked about. You just go further down, release the collaterals off both sides of the ulna, and then you're able to get good visualization. Similarly, when you're doing a fracture, again, you can see here, we've released the collaterals on a, on a tougher fracture, I'll go down and release them on a less tough fracture. I don't need to release the collaterals. I just do the tongue. But when I need to see a lot of the distal humerus, I just release the collaterals, put a sponge around the electron, and just pull it away. You can get a pretty darn good look at the articular surface uh, on your way through. And, and on a total elbow scenario, obviously you're uh, dislocating and you're preparing for your total elbow. It could be extended proximally and distally. Um, you can see here in this revision case, we had to go proximally, identify the radial nerve, strut graft, realign this, go distally. We had a, a plate it. This was actually a, a, an allograft, a, a com combination allograft reconstruction for a pretty, pretty bad case. Um, and on the closure, it's pretty straightforward. Just close uh, with, I use a little bit of combination absorbable, non-absorbable uh, sutures. I don't like to overdo it with too many uh, non-absorbable sutures. And I like to keep the knots. In fact, as opposed to what the picture shows here, I try to bury the knots. Um, as you know, there's very um, thin layer of skin in the back and I don't wanna have anything irritating uh, skin level. Um, and this is the closure. And the post-op protocol is very straightforward and easy. Um, they come back in a week in a, and start to move them. Um, we've done over this uh, more than 150 of these now. We're up in over 200 of these. Uh, we am using it for fractures and for total levels. And I found it um, pretty useful. It's not perfect. Nothing's perfect, right? So um, here's a case where we had uh, a case with a failed hemi uh, total elbow. Um, person did very well, went off, did their thing, and next thing you know, they're back. Uh, uh, here with this problem. This wasn't my case, but I, uh, I got this. You could see that um, there was an osteotomy done uh, to get the hemi in. Um, the patient just uh, uh, went off and did whatever she did. She was actually uh, uh, had a, uh, she was a farmer and did farm work. Uh, and she was a, a very large lady. You can see the size of her arm and she just destroyed this um, total elbow. But we had to revise it. And you know things went pretty well um, um, initially uh, and then things failed and she had a triceps failure. So in our series of a couple hundred of these, we've only, we have very few triceps failures. Um, we're talking at, you know, in the 1% range. Um, and uh, so it's been very good, very good. This one we had to salvage with an allograft um, and hook it back up. And we got a um, you know, decent function, uh, not perfect at all, but uh, it worked uh, overall pretty well. Um, this has been borne out um, in the total elbow world in a subsequent paper um, put out and journal showed elbow um, after our work, and it showed again they had uh, good results, uh, good strength, uh, uh, and their tricep strength, 
and this is uh, looking at uh, the total elbow world. And our recent paper we've put together, we're going to be presenting hopefully soon. Um, we just submitted uh, for looking at it with uh, distal humeral fractures, and we have 26 patients um, in this study, um, and just uh, 13 on either side looking at uh, uh, osteotomy versus uh, try to age match and et cetera, try to match these groups. And we found uh, a slightly decreased procedure time, um, slightly uh, less revision uh, procedures, uh, better uh, range of motion. Um, and that's uh, uh, this just a preliminary uh, and early study. We should be putting that all together pretty soon. So uh, thank you. And uh, I hope you uh, keep your eyes or give this a try, see what you, uh, how it works for you. It's uh, worked very well for us. Thank you. Chris, you ready for the question? Go right into it. So Peter, those are uh, awesome results as usual. A couple of uh, quick things on your approach is, uh, you know, going in on total elbow after someone's done electronic osteotomy is tough, but for the regular fracture, have you ever had a tough time visualizing the articular surface? And then a subset of that is with your approach when you do the total elbow, what secrets do you have to get your implant down the ulna? So on the uh, first first part of it, um, the articular the, the thing you can't see if you have coronal shear anterior coronal shear fractures you're not you know you need to do an osteotomy. That's the only subset of patients that I've really needed to do. As you saw that one case I showed, I've done many of those ones where they're highly comminuted. Uh, you get a pretty darn good look at the articular surface, but coronal shear, anterior shear, you're not going to you're not going to get a good view um, unless you come around the side uh, on the lateral side and kind of work uh, a little bit a little differently. But I, I probably would just do an osteotomy if I if I was dealing with that. Um, in terms of uh, doing the uh, total elbow, uh, the big thing about these total elbows uh, is the predictability of the ulna canal, it's not predictable. Uh, that's the problem. And depending on the system you use, they're all a little bit different. And what you end up finding is there's a lot of freehand involved when you're doing a total elbow on the ulna side, because it's a matter of getting around the corner, that bend and around the corner and getting that stem down. So um, I don't hold back on using a, a burr. Um, I get pretty aggressive with my burr because I'd rather be in my control with the burr and taking some bone down rather than having uh, hitting that, hitting some sort of a, a reamer uh, or using a reamer or a broach, I should say, too hard because that can cause problems. I also use, um, I use the reamers. I have a separate set of the uh, uh, soft bow mitt reamers. And uh, even though I don't use their implant anymore, I just bought the set of their reamers to get things started. And then I switch over to a flexible reamer system if I need it. Um, and uh, as you know, it's a round reamer and you're putting something in that's rectangular so it doesn't always fit. So you have to do a little bit of work inside the canal with a hand uh, burr. But that's the only thing you can do. And it's a little painful, a little painstaking, but you get her done. Thank you. Uh, 